Hello and welcome to the channel where I reveal the secrets of the rich and powerful. If you want to learn how to achieve financial freedom and prosperity, you are in the right place. In this video, I will share with you 10 rules for wealth that go beyond conventional wisdom. The 10 rules will be split between two videos with this being the first part, covering 5 of the 10. These are the principles that the elite use to grow and protect their money and they don't want you to know them. But I will expose them for you so you can apply them to your own life and achieve your financial goals. So, if you're ready to join me on this journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Let's get started. Rule 1. The Secret of Wealth what do you picture when you think of wealth? A castle? A boat? A sports car? These are the signs of wealth that many chase, but not the essence of wealth. As Morgan Housel shows in The Psychology of Money, real wealth is invisible. It is the freedom and joy of having enough money to live the life you love without worrying about others' opinions. Many rich people understand this and live below their means, hiding their wealth behind a veil of abundance. They drive simple cars and live in modest houses but have millions or billions in the bank. They know that wealth is not what you show but what you keep. This is the secret that the elite guard and the wisdom that you need. The less you need, the more you have. The more you have, the richer you are. One of King Solomon's lessons on money that he stresses with this rule is in Proverbs 23, 4-5. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. Solomon warns us not to be greedy for riches or to rely on our own smart hearts to get wealth. He reminds us that riches are temporary and unstable and that we should not love them. Instead, we should trust in God who gives us all we need and more. Solomon knew that true wealth comes from God, not from money. He also knew that money can be good or bad depending on how we use it. He once said, The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. Moving on to the next topic from 10 rules for wealth beyond conventional wisdom. That is, temporal mastery. Time is the ultimate currency of life. You can't buy more of it, no matter how rich you are. Yet, most people waste their time on things that don't matter or sell their time for money that they don't enjoy. They are like hamsters on a wheel, going nowhere. To master time is to master wealth. It means to use your time wisely, to invest it in things that will pay off in the future, and to create value that lasts beyond your lifetime. It means to stop being a slave to money and start being a boss of money. It means to align your time with your vision and to live a fulfilling and abundant life. Those who master time are the ones who shape their destiny and who enjoy their work for generations. They are like eagles soaring high, seeing the big picture. And how do the rich use this rule to make money? They use this rule to make money by creating multiple income sources that generate cash without their involvement, such as businesses, investments, royalties, etc. There are like money machines that work 24-7, investing in assets that grow in value over time, such as real estate, stocks, gold, etc. They are like farmers who plant seeds and harvest crops year after year, developing their skills and knowledge that increase their market value, such as education, certifications, experience, etc. Here are some questions to reflect on. How are you spending your time now? 
Are you investing it in things that will bring you long-term value or are you wasting it on things that don't matter later? Are you a hamster or an eagle? What are some ways that you can make your money work for you, not the other way around? How can you create passive income or leverage your skills and knowledge to create lasting value? How can you be a money machine, a farmer, a craftsman, or an artist? Feel free to comment below and let's learn from each other. Rule 3. Utility Redefined Money is a tool, not a destination. It can help you create the life you want, but it can also distract you from what matters. Money can buy comfort, convenience, and security, but it can also tempt you to waste or harm it. Money can enhance your well-being, but it can also undermine it. Some people chase money for the wrong reasons. They think more money will make them happier, more successful, or more respected. They think money will solve their problems or fill their emptiness. They think money is their worth or their happiness, but they are wrong. What are some things money can't buy but are essential for happiness? More money doesn't mean more happiness. After meeting your basic needs, money doesn't increase your life satisfaction. Money can also bring stress, anxiety, envy, greed, or guilt. Money can make you lose your values, your purpose, or your relationships. More money doesn't mean more success. Success is not how much money you have, but how much you achieve your goals and contribute to the world. Success is not how much you have, but how much you give. Success is not how much you earn, but how much you learn. Success is not how rich you are, but how rich you make others. How can you respect others regardless of their money? More money doesn't mean more respect. Respect is not how much money you have, but how much you respect yourself and others. Respect is not how much you own, but how much you care. Respect is not how much you spend, but how much you serve. Respect is not how wealthy you are, but how worthy you are. Therefore, money is not the goal of wealth. But the means. Money is not for buying things you don't need, but for creating the life you want. True wealth is not how much you make, but how much you keep. True wealth is not how much you spend, but how much you enjoy. True wealth is balancing financial growth with holistic well-being, where each dollar adds value without taking meaning. Here is a quote from P.T. Barnum. Money is a terrible master, but an excellent servant. This quote means that money can help you achieve your goals, but it can also enslave you to its whims. It says that you should use money wisely, but not let money use you. It reminds us that we should control our money, not let our money control us. It encourages you to be a master of your money, not a servant to your money. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more content like this, comment the word more wealth wisdom so I know. Let's talk about the next rule for wealth beyond conventional wisdom, which is don't just save, invest. You work hard for your money, but do you make your money work hard for you? If you want financial freedom and security, you need to do more than just save your money. You need to invest it. Saving money is good, but not enough. Saving money is like being a farmer. You protect your money from pests such as debt, taxes, and inflation. You have a barn of savings for emergencies, but saving too much money is bad. Saving too much money is like being a farmer who never sells his crops. You miss out on the opportunities to grow your wealth and explore new markets. You let your barn of savings rot while your pests get stronger. Investing money is better but not easy. Investing money is like being a trader. You use your money to make more money by buying assets that increase in value over time. You have a caravan of investments that you can sell for a profit. But investing money is risky. Investing money is like being a trader who faces many dangers and challenges. 
You have to deal with uncertainty, volatility, and competition. You have to be careful not to lose your caravan of investments, or worse, get robbed by them. So how do you save and invest your money like a champion? How do you balance your farmer and trader sides and make the most of your money? How do you master your finances? The answer was simple. You need the envelope method. The envelope method is a budgeting technique that helps you control your spending and allocate your money for different purposes. It works like this. Step 1. Make a budget. List your income and expenses. Aim for a zero-based budget where income minus expenses equals zero. Give every dollar a job. Step 2. Think of the budget lines that need an envelope. These are the ones you tend to overspend. Here are some examples. Groceries, restaurants, gas, medicine, hair care, skin care, car maintenance, personal entertainment, gifts. Step 3. Create and fill envelopes for those budget lines. For example, if you budget $500 for groceries and get paid twice a month, take out $250 from each paycheck and put it in an envelope labeled groceries. Take the envelope with you when you shop. If you spend $200 the first week, you have $50 left until the next paycheck. Step 4. Save some money for investing. Create another envelope labeled investing. And this is where you put the money to buy assets that grow over time, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, or gold. Save at least 10% of your income for investing. For example, if you make $4,000 a month, put at least $400 in your investing envelope. Use this money to open an investment account and start buying assets. Alright, let's talk about the next rule of wealth beyond conventional wisdom which is the horizon of expectations. You might think that chasing money will make you happy, but you're wrong. Every time you reach a new goal, you just want more. You're never satisfied, always hungry for the next big thing. You're trapped in a vicious circle of unhappiness. How do you break free? By changing your perspective. Stop dreaming about the future and start living in the present. Stop measuring your worth by your bank account and start appreciating what you have. That's how you find true joy in the midst of plenty. Vygotsky was a famous Russian psychologist who had a big impact on the field of education. He believed that learning is a social process that is influenced by culture and context. He came up with the idea of the zone of proximal development which is the gap between what a learner can do on their own and what they can do with the help of a more knowledgeable person. He also stressed the importance of language, communication, and collaborating in learning. Vygotsky's life story is an example of how he adjusted his expectations to his reality. He was born in 1896 in a small town in Belarus, where he grew up in a Jewish family. He faced discrimination and oppression from the Russian government, which limited his educational and career opportunities. He studied law at Moscow State University, but he was more interested in psychology, sociology, linguistics, and philosophy. He started working as a psychologist in 1924, but he had to deal with censorship and political pressure from the Soviet regime. He also suffered from tuberculosis, which affected his health and productivity. He died in 1934 at the age of 37, leaving behind many unfinished works. Despite these challenges, Vygotsky never gave up on his passion and curiosity. He was always eager to learn new things and to share his ideas with others. He collaborated with many colleagues and students who continued his legacy after his death. He also enjoyed reading literature and art, which inspired his creativity and imagination. He was happy with what he had and what he could do, rather than what he lacked or what he could not do. He lived in the present, not in the future. He was content with his wealth of knowledge, not his wealth of money. Using Vygotsky as an example, 
Striving to follow that idea will not only make our lives easier now, but will continue to bear fruit in the future. That's all for part 1. We will release part 2 next. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and comment what you liked about it or something you think was missing from the first five. Remember, financial freedom starts with an adaptable mindset. See you in the next video. Cheers!